Matt here from The Random Maker, and we're, today we're gonna to be doing an apartment build. The whole point of an apartment build is you can do it with limited to almost no tools. Today we're gonna to be building this handy dandy birdhouse for that kid at home who wants to swing a hammer. This is a incredibly easy project that kids and beginners when it comes to making stuff can do in very short time, very little material, and a very, very high easy success rate. What you're gonna need, a drill, with spade bit and a regular drill bit, those, if you don't have them, hopefully you can borrow them. They're common enough tools. Number two, a handsaw or a skill saw. I used a handsaw in this case, which is why some of the cuts are not as pretty, and a hammer and a nails and a tape measure. Really low entry list, and that's what the apartment series is all about. So um, instead of talking, let's get going. Okay, so I'm gonna use these one by fours I found around. You can just simply use one by six or honestly any clean wood with this project. That's the beauty of it. It's actually very simple. And that's one reason I really like it for an apartment build. So yeah, let's get in detail and actually let's start measuring all this. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna measure my back plate at eight inches because I'm gonna cut two sides at six. And just to make sure we have Nice straight line because we are going to use a handsaw. There is our back. I'm also going to drill later. You'll see. And then I'm going to want two at six inches because those are my sides. All right. And This is our, this is our back, left, right. I do recommend writing down what they are. And then our front is going to be six inches. Now, because the wood, and we're just gonna butt it up, is three and a half inches, I always like a little bit of a lip. And for the bottom, because I'm gonna show you to make sure that the piece can fit in without cutting it lengthwise, I'm gonna leave it for now because I wanna show you something, otherwise it's not gonna make sense. Okay, so this setup here is definitely not ideal, but it is more in the apartment build vein of thoughts, which is very simple. You don't have a wood shop, you don't have a wood vise, you have limited tools, and sometimes this is a hard answer for me to use because I think a lot of people have circular saws. Turns out, not really. Um, you could get the uh, Home Depot or something, they charge per cut, Home Hardware, whoever, to cut it for you. It's kind of not the point of this. We want to use our own hands. So I have an old saw that I use as basically just to finish off stuff here and there without chipping. So what I've done here, C-clamp, not expensive, honestly, helpful to have around in your toolbox anyway. So I kind of think it's fair. And then just to get you in the habit of not damaging your projects, I have a scrap piece of wood here because if I tighten it and tighten it too hard, this is pine, really soft. So it will mark. And yeah, this will not mark it. And we're just gonna cut it. So I'm gonna show you how to use a handsaw. Cut perfect straight every single time. Boom. Okay, so here we have our old saw. And what you wanna do first is, one of the reasons we marked it with a speed square is we have a straight line to work with. So I'm going to take my saw, line it up as straight as possible, and I'm gonna backstroke it. Now, what that does is it gives me a perch to rest the saw in. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna start at a angle because to try and just do it on the first run, you're trying to control too many teeth. So I'm gonna lift it up and I'm gonna slowly raise it into the saw or lower the saw into the wood. So let's get going. Okay, so we're at the end of the cut and one thing I want you to notice is it's starting to kind of wiggle and you don't want to break it off because you'll chip. So what I do is I raise it up again and just kind of finish it off just like that. And as we can see, it's a pretty nice looking cut. Okay, I'm gonna finish up all these and let's keep going. We have all our pieces cut out. I did cut the bottom just, I want to get all the cutting out of the way. I'm not a big fan of doing hand saw. I don't do it often as you can kind of see with the video, but I also recognize not everybody has access to tools. So now what we have to do is we do have to drill. It is way easier to drill holes while the pieces are flat than later. Now I do have a drill press back here, but I don't think that everybody has. 
So we are gonna be using a drill to drill through all these pieces. So you're gonna to wanna to leave out your back piece because we are gonna put a hole in it for it to put a screw through. And we also wanna pick one of, because the front two sides are the same, it's fine, take one of those. Now, one thing I am gonna say is when I was kind of just looking around with the birdhouse, uh, there are specific sizes, holes, even widths. Like this birdhouse is actually quite small because I was just trying to use material I had in my shop. You could swap it for one by eight, one by six, or any other sizes and to attract certain types of birds. Please do your research on that. This is a how to do it with, for how to do the process rather than the exact measurements. And so you can swap the measurements as you see fit. So what I'm going to do here, is I'm gonna take a speed square and I'm gonna want the whole the whole piece is six I'm gonna put it two and a half inches high uh, off the top and in the middle so one and three quarters because the wood is a one by four which if you didn't know is not exactly one by four okay this I'm just gonna figure out right in the middle. And I'm gonna drop it down one inch because I don't want the top getting hidden. So I'm gonna put the hole quite high. Okay, let's get some clips of me drilling the holes so you know how to do that. Let's move on. One reason I like C-clamps, they're just incredibly versatile. Um, I like this tabletop, so I have a piece of sacrificial wood down, so once I break through, we can see, because what I'm using is a spade bit, and what spade bits do, pretty simple, big holes. So, spade bit, just on our mark, put it in, and let's go. Voila. Now, for the top, I'm going to do is a little different because this one actually will put a hole and a, a blind spot for a screw to go in. So this one, I'm going to go off my table. It's honestly, big tip. Always make sure, even if you have a sacrificial piece, make sure how far you're going to drill in. It does not go into your table. What I'm going to do... There we go. Nice little countersunk hole. That way, when you hang it up, the screw will be there. Not really necessary, but um, I do recommend the hole. This is pine if it's out in the weather, if you ever move it. It's gonna crack over the years, so just by having that in there, it will lengthen the life of this. Depending what type of finish you use, you can extend the life of this, but uh, yeah, that's about it. This is the part I actually, as stupid as it sounds, one of the hardest parts of the video for me, because I'm kind of assuming that the whole point of this project is you're learning how to use tools or you're doing this project with a kid so, properly you should use very small nails. Problem, really small nails with a hammer is not always the best idea because I've just seen enough people hit their fingers. So, your mileage may vary on what I'm about to say. Now, what we're gonna do here is I'm actually gonna do the back first. You can do the front first. I find it easier with the back, tomato, tomato. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take my sides because what we want to do is actually pre-nail the wood in. So I'm going to take it and I'm just going to put a line on the back very lightly. Now we know exactly where our wood is and we're going to hit it on the other side. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. As I said, there's a whole, not a whole lot of room on this, but the idea of this is you can swap out the size for if you do your research, you want to track this bird, that bird, just you can move the sizes as you see fit. Now, what I am going to do is I am using, I am using larger nails. Reason for that, very simple. We're talking about beginners. And I want beginners to have success right away without hitting their fingers. So the reason we put those lines in is I'm gonna take a nail and the first thing I'm gonna do, is actually blunt the nail and I'm gonna put it in. Blunt the nail. And I'm eyeballing in the center because I don't want to be too close to the edge. I want to kind of center the wood and that is one of the reasons we drew. I, it is very easy for you to visualize where the center is. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is put it over the table and just kind of hit it until you can see the spikes through on the first one. 
Now the reason for that is, this is going to move around. So what I want, as soon as I pin it, when I push down, the spikes are in the wood and I can do this quite simply on my own or if you had another hand and you can just, if you're a kid, tap it and already it's in place and that way you're not playing find that nail. So like I said, these nails are big but I'm keeping kids and beginners in mind and the bigger the nail, the easier it's hit. So let's just finish it off. Always after the nail, double check. Happy. Okay, next. We have our pieces that are the same. I am going to do the X same. I'm just gonna line it up. And now it's actually a little easier because you've got the other side. And that's one reason I didn't do the spike over the side. You can, um, I just, for me, I didn't wanna get any marks on this table when I put it on. So just the way it is, so. Realign. All right, perfect. Woohoo! Next, we're gonna put our piece on the ground, and here is the part where I always get people worried. So it's actually very, very easy to do what I'm about to do next. So first, we only care about one slide, and again, you can do the trick where I put the wood and draw a line and all that, but it will work just as well without it. And so what I'm gonna do is, I'm only gonna worry about one side at the start, okay? And that is very on purpose because the wood is not perfectly flush right now. So I'm just gonna lay this here and I'm only gonna worry about this side right here. I'm gonna take a nail and I'm gonna hold it down. Always check to make sure the nails don't go in so you don't hurt any birds because we're birdies. Okay, next. Nail. Okay, now what you're gonna do is just like before where we kind of set a nail, I'm gonna put the two nails in place. Maybe a little straighter. Okay, and boom. Okay. Now, what I'm gonna do is to not smash my fingers, I'm gonna hold it, so I'm gonna hit this nail first, I'm gonna take my hand on the other side and just pull it in line and eyeball where it goes. And voila, the rest of this is actually easy with the top. If you've done it all right, um, we can just put everything on there. And if it's not perfect, you used a hand saw. Even for me, where normally I can, I'm very accurate with saws, I was a little out here and I kind of left it in just to show practice makes perfect. Now on the top, I am gonna recommend just putting two in. If you're ever gonna clean this, um, make it easier to get out and yeah. Nice little there. Okay, last thing. This is the part where what you wanna do when you're measuring. If you put, make sure you have your pieces on the, that all their back and front are on the outside. The reason is that means we don't have to trim our piece because we've got the length there. All you have to do is measure the length right here. Now, if the wood, if your nail is a little bit not happy, um, so like basically I had a little splinter here, the, nice and easy to fix it. But what I'm gonna do here is just very carefully actually going to put this in. And some people might say, well, why didn't you put the piece in first? Very simple, I didn't want to. I don't like doing that because it actually, the, it, this is, this is the bottom is where I want to trim if I'm going to trim at all because of just the way it is. And yep, we're just going to hit this in place and we are now good to go. So if it's a nice tight fit, just take your hammer.
Okay. Got that there. Next, very simple. Again, we're just gonna put one nail in. Tappy tappy, make sure it's nice and level. And voila, we have a beautiful birdhouse. It's a very small box, but it could be home for a smaller bird. Again, not an expert, so you want to make sure that you're actually you do your research and everything. And yeah, this is the point if you're working with a kid or yourself, if you just put this out in the elements, it will eventually start to weather. I would actually recommend putting some type of coat on there if it's if it's a kid. I've done this project with uh, many different students over the years where we build this, but we let them paint it at this point. You just take a outdoor primer, bonnet white let them go to town on any regular paints and then I just put a, an outdoor clear coat over top to seal it in. If you don't use the clear coat, it will wash off eventually. All right, well, that's the whole video here and this is our birdhouse apartment build. If you like this video, why don't you hit the like button. If you like this type of content of building and random, why don't you hit the subscribe button. We do a video every single week, whether it's a short or a longer form. And if you have any ideas for an apartment build or even just want to say I messed up with something, I'm expecting some of the uh, bird lovers to comment on how my build is too small, too big, because I do know there's different sizes and all that. So, hmm, what do I want to say? This is Matt from The Random Maker. Until next time, let's get making.